Hi friends, welcome to this brand new part, part 23 of this playlist. I hope you have been enjoying the learning on this channel. If by now you have not become a member, this is your opportunity. Please click the join button below this video and go for a cloud kernel or a cloud ninja membership. Please hit the subscribe button if you have not become a subscriber yet. What are the advantages of subscribing to this channel? You stay tuned to the latest development in the cloud world, cloud space, and primarily AWS, GCP, and Azure certifications. This channel is totally focused on that. Let us look at question number 82. Before that, if you are wondering, hey, where did part 22 go? For your information, part 22 is available for members, cloud kernel, and upwards. So this is your opportunity if you want access to all of those questions become a cloud kernel member or a cloud ninja member hey what happens is you have a company and what does the company do you have on premises world and you have a cloud world and these two guys are talking to each other using what they are using direct connect what does direct connect to it lays down a physical wire set of cables it does not use the already existing internet connection that you have it connects it connects with brand new cables and a separate sort of a network your on-premises and the data center of AWS in the connectivity world in the connectivity world it is very expensive Mercedes Benz see all the traffic which is a non VPC traffic you see this a non VPC traffic all non VPC traffic routes to the virtual private gateway that means that database does not gets accessed by public it always go through that private stuff and the idea here is the question is saying you have a lambda function and you want the lambda function to access the database and the database is running in a private subnet what do you do the first option says you configure lambda function to run in a vpc with app appropriate security group so what they're saying is you put the lambda function in the vpc and let this get managed by the security group nobody no you cannot because the database it can only be accessed by private subnets so you cannot do this like put put this in the vpc nobody would allow you to put it in the vpc so a is wrong b says you set up a vpn connection why man why you already have mercedes benz that is direct connect now what's the use of buying a honda civic no use vpn connection is a honda civic why do we do that and that too you are saying that you will do it from aws to data center but which data center a reliance data center we want to connect on premises to aws data center so from aws god knows which data center are you talking about so this is wrong as well third c it says you update the route tables in the vpc to allow the lambda function to access the on premises data center through direct connect okay so in option b they were talking about the on premises data center okay so option b my justification is still holding good because what they are saying is I still I have direct connect and I will still use a VPN connection that is not going to solve it okay but option C this can solve it because they are trying to use the route tables to route the connection to for, for lambda so what will happen is the route table it contains a set of rules and these are called routes and they determine where network traffic from your subnet or gateway is directed so this will det determine the direction of the network traffic so this looks correct option d says that you will create an elastic ip address and then configure lambda to send traffic through this elastic ip address without the elastic address interface so this one see it is not about a new ip or elastic ip you are not allowed to access directly because it is in the private subnet so you got to go through a route which will allow you access suppose you know that uh, the uk queen's palace you cannot get access okay so whether you're saying that oh hey you know what elastic ip is just like hey you know what now i will change my get up and now i will wear a jacket uh, and then probably i'll get an access nobody you will not get that access how you can get that access if you still want to get in is you have to use the right set of procedure and process that is the route table this would be my final answer see this is the next question what is the company doing my friend the company is trying to build a new dynamic ordering website just like amazon.com 
The next thing the company wants to do it, it is totally like an Indian company. They want to minimize server maintenance. They want to minimize patching. Obviously, this has to come with cost as well. They want to minimize cost. Even the cost is not mentioned here, but that goes implicit. Now, what are the other requirements? The website has to be highly available, just like Amazon.com, just like that. Amazon.com is highly available. I never saw a scenario when the website was down. And it must scale read and write capacity as quickly as possible. If there are 100,000 customers, it should work as good as it is. If there are 1 million customers, it like scales up. The read and write should be as efficient as it was working for 100K customers. Now, what should you do? You have these four options. What should you do? Let's scan the options. Option A, it says you would host the static content on S3. You would host the dynamic content on API Gateway and Lambda. And then you will use DynamoDB. Okay, so let's look at what is API Gateway. So if you have applications where you are making use of a lot of APIs, then API Gateway is a ready-made solution from AWS. Okay, like I say always, whenever you get an opportunity, use a ready-made solution in AWS. Do not try to create a custom solution if a ready-made solution is available. So this looks good to me, API Gateway, and then it is telling you to use DynamoDB with on-demand capacity for the database. Always remember, always remember, the question here is not talking about the nature of database. It is not saying it has to be an RDBMS database. I want to run SQL. And it is not even saying, I don't want RDBMS database. I don't want uh, any SQLs. It is not saying so. That means you have the flexibility. If I have the flexibility, if I know these are my requirements, high availability and so on, I know that DynamoDB is my database. Why? If you see applications like Uber, Lyft and so on, they all make use of NoSQL databases like DynamoDB. Why? Because you get single digit millisecond performance, man. It is so fast. It is so fast. So did the question you want fast? No, you will, you might say, hey, the question is not talking about performance. My friend, this line, it must scale read and write capacity. It is to do with performance. It is to do with enhancing the user experience through fast retrieval of data. Okay, so this looks good as of now. And then it is talking about configuring cloud front which is like you know you securely deliver content with low latency and high transfer speed so it's basically like you are trying to give a very high performant solution this looks perfect because cloud front would ensure that the application gets scaled read and dynamodb would ensure that if a scale up is required or a scale down is required dynamodb has this on demand capacity you see this documentation, it has two types of things, on-demand capacity and provision capacity. Provision means you say, hey, you know what, I will currently run the month with, say, $3,000. That is my uh, budget for this month to spend on groceries and utilities and other things. And on-demand means, hey, you know what, I would not fix it. I might use 3000 this month. I might use 5000 this month. I might use 10000 this month. But if you are using on-demand, what will happen? You need to be a millionaire man if you want to live that life. That means in the cloud world, you have to spend enormous amount of money. If you are willing to spend that money, you go for on-demand. So this is my answer. But let us talk about why others are not right. First thing, they are making use of Aurora. And you know what? Any RDBMS databases will not suffice here. Will not suffice here. Because it cannot give you that kind of scale up and speed period so that is wrong and but then if you see option c and d d is again talking about using aurora which is a sql based database this is again wrong but you might say hey you know what c is talking about dynamo db how would you strike this off this is how i would do that first of all api gateway is a lot better than uh, ec2 why like I told you, my thumb rule, my thumb rule, my thumb rule. If I have something which is ready-made from AWS, I will use that. I would not create a custom solution. In option C, I am creating a custom solution. I am going to set up the scaling group manually. I am going to put it behind an ALV to distribute the traffic. But what about speed? Here I am making use of CloudFront to give me that edge. 
Second is DynamoDB, they are using provision write capacity. We want to use on demand capacity. Why? I already explained this. On demand is a lot better than provision because provision you are tying up their hands. Like, you know what? You want to run your budget, you run your month with $3,000 budget. Your groceries and utilities should not cross $3,000. But on demand is like we are flexible. You might use 2000, you might use $8,000, you might use $15,000. Mind you, you need to be a millionaire if you want to live that life. Hence, C is wrong as well. This is my final answer. I hope you agree with that. See, this question simple. There is a database outage that happens, and you want to prevent this in future. Nobody likes a database outage. Now, how can you do that? And uh, what are the keywords? What are the keywords? MySQL is one keyword. But then if you see here, MySQL is being used almost everywhere. So we cannot clearly say which one is right, which one is wrong. So you want a data solution or database solution to minimize data loss. That means that, means that no data should be lost. Even if you have replicas and so on, data should not be lost and each transaction should be put in two nodes at least two nodes at least let us look at option a it says you create db instance with synchronous replication to three nodes in three easies see synchronous replication when we are creating read replicas we use that but if you use rds multi az it will uh, it is a durable relational database deployed across up to three azs up to three azs it will deploy and it will automatically take care of replication. So this is my answer. It is better compared to uh, option A, which talks about manually or probably doing the synchronous replication manually. But if you have a multi ac configuration enabled, then the synchronous uh, or sorry, the sync will happen automatically. Let's look at C. So C says that you have the database instance and create a read replica in another region and then synchronize it so read replica see when do we use read replica if you have report and if you see that reports are causing the database to go slow then you split the read and write and you create a read replica only for reports here you don't have any such scenario now d it is telling you to use a ec2 instance and then have mysql on ec2 simple if you have rds with mysql it is a ready-made solution. Why will you create a custom solution on EC2? Do not do that. So this would be my final answer. Now let us look at this one. See, there is an application and it runs on EC2. The box, outer box is EC2, inner box is the application. And this is a legacy application. That means some old application created 5-10 years back. But the application is monolithic in architecture. Monolithic means it is tightly coupled that means if one point fails everything would fail so whenever you have such requirements monolithic that is not good you you should make it uh, you should make it kind of loosely coupled one way of doing loosely coupled is introduce sqs sqs now what this is saying is if you want to scale the application like scale up so that if there are too many users, the application should still work. Then you need to increase the size of the instances. And the developers decided, hey, you know what? We want to rewrite the application using microservice architecture. Perfect. Because using microservice architecture, you can decouple. You can decouple or loosely couple. And they will use ECS. Now, as an architect as a solution architect because <laughs> you are preparing for solution uh, architect exam what would you recommend for communication between the microservices if there are two microservices they want to talk to each other what would you recommend a phone a mobile phone what would you recommend see i already gave you a hint the moment i see monolithic i think about sqs the moment i see you want to scale the application and it is microservice architecture that means again i think about sqs so where do i find sqs i find it here i do not see sqs in other 
options so option a would be my answer but let us still decode option a says you use sqs and add code to data producers so if you you if you are using sqs you have these producers you have consumers this is p this is c okay Con producers and consumers so you add code to producers and send data to the queue so you have sqs in between this is sqs and then you add code to the consumers to read it from the queue so this is perfect okay option b i i have cleared the slide because we want to again understand option b so what does option b says you use sns what is sns sns topic uh sns simple notification service it is about pop sub service it is not about it is about pushing a message sms and so on this will not help you with monolithic architecture creating loosely coupled application it will not help you with that so that's why this is wrong now c says that here you will get creative you will write lambda function to pass the messages and you will add the code both the ways producer and consumer you have producer you have consumer you will add the code both the places this will not work why because lambda function it is not a replacement of sqs sqs it is a fully managed messaging queue you want a queue service here okay so that like even if your producer goes down consumer goes down the queue will hold the data till the consumer consumes it this is how this works you have a producer you have a consumer here you have a producer here in between you have sqs and the data is encrypted now option d talks about using dynamo db table you use db streams and then you use producer and consumer dynamo streams is about change data capture see why we use change if anything changes in the database for example you had 10 rows now you have 15 so that means five new records are there if you had 10 rows now also you have 10 but your dollar value changed in two rows so that is the change it will capture it is not about processing the data it is about change data capture this is a wrong or misfit in this case we want to decouple we don't want to identify what are the new set of records or change records we don't have that requirement here that is why this would be my final answer guys please hit the subscribe button this channel is totally dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications majorly aws gcp and azure if you have not picked the join button please click it below this video and become a cloud kernel or a cloud ninja member and you will gain access to lot more other questions on saac03 and several other certifications please focus on the concepts there are numerous testimonies on the, the comment section of so many videos of people passing this exam on and several certification exams going through the content published on this channel stay tuned have a nice learning. Enjoy your learning. See you in the next part.